Hey everyone, we're back here live in Austin, um, continuing our coverage of Linux Foundation Open Source Summit. And, and forgive me if we're a little security heavy this week, but it, it's actually, it's, it's good for my soul to see security taking center stage here first and front and center. Our next guest is Caleb Brown. Caleb joins us from Sydney. Yes, I come from Sydney uh, on behalf of Google and the open source security team. Absolutely. Kayla, first of all, welcome and thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Second of all, we were talking off camera. I, I know several friends in the Google security world, but not in the open source security team. So tell me, what's the charter for the Google open source security team? That's a great question and one I should be able to answer <laughs> off the top of my head. I, I've only been with the team like uh, six to nine months, so I'm still like, I feel green, but um, the charter is to uh, like improve the security of open source and to make it like, safe and um, secure for people to consume. Um, and so uh, we work very closely with the OpenSSF and, and a lot of our work is through them and through the projects that they run. Um, and well, Google yeah. is one of the biggest corporate benefactors of, of OpenSSF, but they're not alone. No, that IBM, Microsoft, to name some of the big ones. And I, I, there's a lot more, I think it's 30 or 50. Oh, it's uh, growing really and, rapidly. And growing every day, I was gonna say that. Um, and, and I mean, look, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out why Google is invested in this. Google, probably one of the biggest open source uh, uh, consumers as well as open source creators in the world. So if we're gonna tackle open source security head on, you'd want Google involved in it obvi for obvious reasons. Yeah, totally agree. Yep. Yeah. So look, six to nine months is a lifetime in tech, right? This is internet <laughs> yeah. time. You're like 21 years in on this. <laughs> um, but you know, we were talking a little off off camera. Your background is is more in in DevOps and so I like so I've worked on a variety of projects, but my interest in terms of um, places that I have enjoyed uh, kind of having an impact and being able to work has been in thinking through like how can we make what we w how can we make the process of development uh, like not just easier for developers but um, easier to re like repeatable and safe and um, to be able to like be confident that we're going to be able to ship products that are going to work for our customers. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you know, and again, we were talking off camera. This whole notion of calling something software supply chain security. You know, if you're from a DevOps background, you know how much it borrows from lean and lean IT and lean man. And, how much lean IT borrows from lean manufacturing. Mm. So that whole notion of supply chain and supply chain security, uh, to me is like lifted out of the lean lexicon. And, and so, you know, so it's a very DevOps centric view mm. of how we build software and how we should secure it. For sure, yeah. Um, that being said, it's been a tough couple of years. Right? Yeah. We, we, we've had some very, very high profile uh, incidents. And, you know, not to say it didn't happen before and it won't happen again, but certainly the last few years have been a tough, mm. you know, and it's shined a real spotlight on this. Yeah, I, I think that's a huge part of driving the growth of the OpenSSS oh, no and doubt. the space is, is the pre prior incidents, yeah. the, the focus from the White House, those sorts of things, yeah. You know what, I've been in security 20 something, almost 25 years. I will tell you there's nothing better for security than a good old breach or incident, <laughs> right? Because that gets people religion, right? Yes, and, right. And, um, and, but it, it's amazing, memories are short lived and, and they go back to their old non-secure ways. But, is what it is. Anyway, um, let's talk about, you know, what, what is Google, and I'm asking you now on behalf of, you know, in your position here, what are you guys seeing from the open SSF that gives you, like makes you optimistic, that says, hey, we're doing something on the right track here? I, I am, a few things that I'm kind of been really impressed to see, particularly yesterday in the open SSF day, um, was, is, 
and, and also in my involvement through the OpenSSF is the like growing adoption of things like SIGStore um, for artifact signing um, mm -hmm. and, and attestation um, and OSV being more broadly adopted. Um, so those sorts of initiatives give me some hope that... OSV, yeah. I don't know if our oh, so is familiar. OS, OSV is... Um, I'm going to get the name wrong. Um, it's, it's basically... Well, it's going to be an open source... It could be, but it's, it's kind of a CVE. I, I can't remember, and I'm like, my team in Sydney is the one working on it. Um, I wouldn't like actually blank on it. Against anyway, it's, it's kind of a, a, a contributor, an open uh, approach to things like CVE. Okay. So, um, I get CVE it. is kind of centralized and controlled. Um, and NIST. And um, if someone looks at the CVE and goes, that's wrong, or we need to update that, it's very hard. Actually, um, look, I was. I don't mean to give you a tripped up question. That's not <laughs> That's ever right. what I do. We've had guests explain it to us. <coughs> and it really, from what I know about it, and if I'm wrong, you could blame me. Don't blame Caleb. From what I know about it is CVE is rather rigid mm. in that they tell you if something is a critical or medium or light kind of vulnerability. With OSV... There are other factors that get put into the mix that allow an organization, each organization, on their, for their world to, to rate a given vulnerability or a given uh, condition as, oh, this is red, you know, red, yellow, or whatever you want to scale it. The, the, the other big problem it's trying to solve is uh, it's really hard to kind of take that and then process it in a way where you can do it at scale. So right. OSV is like a, a specific schema around how this vulnerability information is defined so that you can build tooling around it. Yes. And you can automate the process of linking up your internal uh, dependencies to the, yep. the report. So and, and super valuable. You know, putting the cherry on it is it gives organizations a chance to customize this for their own environments and their own risk factors and, and everything else. Which is important, right? Mm. That was always one of the things with CVE. It's just because you're categorizing it as critical. Look, it's yeah. for us, it's not because for whatever reason, right? We've got it walled off. It's it's whatever. Um, I, I think that is important. Uh, I'd like to ask. So, have you had much into involvement with some of the other OSSF partners? Um, I'll get to that. Oh, you mean the other companies? That, yeah. Uh, we've. I'm. Um, I've been uh, some small collaboration some with IBM um, on one of the projects that I'm involved in, um, the, which has been really interesting, um, and uh, a little bit with Sonotype as well. I've come like bumped into them on another project that I work on as well. Um, I haven't had um, a lot of opportunities to be engaged, um, and it's like very early days. But uh, it's one of the things I'm actually also it's really exciting about this space is that there's this. Um, place where people are communicating right. from different companies to try and come up with things together um, rather than somebody saying, here's a thing we built, um, yeah. please use it. And, yeah. and then it never gets Well, the, the, or, it's also, yeah. look, open source security and, and software supply chain security is so important right mm. now that it's too important to let it become balkanized, right? To mm. let it to become... You know, every company has their own flavor of this because you're never going to really address the totality of, of it if, if, if it's broken into 20 different flavors, languages, and, that's right. and variations. You, this, this is something that's screamed out for a industry-wide response. And it just so happened that o OpenSSF was... I mean, sometimes things happen for a reason, <laughs> right? I was talking to the guy, the person before you, a supply chain security company based in Tel Aviv. They were founded, I think, in December of 2019. The next month, solar winds was happened. That, was that Sneak, by the way? No, no, no. no they're older than okay, that. This one was okay. legit, I think, okay. was the name of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sneak's a little older. Yeah. But um, 
But anyway, you know, talk about better to be lucky than smart sometimes. <laughs> if you're going to start a software supply chain company a month or two before the solar winds incident, isn't a bad time to do it. No, that's very fortunate. Yeah. but <laughs> Un Unfortunate for people who well, suffered from and that. Right. But, and we yeah. don't, I'm not minimizing no. any of the suffering or aggravation it's mm. caused. But, you know, certainly it, it seems to me as just someone sitting here, I'm not as involved as you are, that, <coughs> excuse me, Having an organization like this to tackle the problem that we're seeing right now, if this was five years ago, what would we be doing? That's we, right. You know, we'd be yeah. in a people world of trouble. So, uh, like, uh, like even the collaboration um, uh, amongst the the package repositories mm -hmm. has been amazing to see. Where you have people from Maven and Ruby Gems and Pipe and NPM, all these different. Um, parts of the world, like an open source, being together in a room and talking about what's going on and how can they improve their um, their security is that's a great thing to see, and I think it's going to have a uh, absolutely. I, I think it will. And you know, when ninety percent of the software we're using has open source in it, it's a it's a it's the time has come for this, right? Mm. This is uh, yeah. this was best time even. So I'm really happy to be, uh, you know, involved in that. You mentioned several projects you're involved in. Why don't you tell us a little? Sure thing. So um, I'm involved in two kind of the still growing and establishing projects. Um, the first is um, uh, about scoring and di discovering critical projects. So one of OpenSSF's kind of biggest thing is to make spend money and and make the most critical projects secure or more secure. Um, and I guess a big question in that is like, what are the critical projects? So um, there is a working group that is involved in trying to like answer that question. Um, and there are uh, various approaches. So um, the OpenSSF spent money, uh, like uh, work collaborated with Harvard um, to produce the Harvard Census Report, which is um, academic researchers looking at um, data from some organizations about how their dependencies um, uh, fit together and how uh, what, what are the critical dependencies based on that? Um, and then they're in the working group as well, they're uh, talking about how, how can we engage experts in communities to be able to get their thoughts on what is uh, or isn't critical. Um, the project I'm specifically involved in is about um, doing that uh, programmatically and automatically by basically querying sources of data on the internet, um, collecting a bunch of signals about all the projects that are out there and then trying to like computer score, basically, um, that we can use to discover what is critical and what's not critical. That's um, ancient. That's great stuff. So, yeah, the big big part of this is about automating it and making it uh, so we can keep r repeating it. It's hard to query experts over and over again. It's hard to conduct research um, uh, in a way that's regular and repeatable. Um, but computers are really good at doing automatic things. So, um, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. If something's going to work, that should work, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's at the stage where, like, I'm trying to kind of get it, get it up and get, um, uh, get it automated. Um, but we're also interested in how organizations can use this project for understanding their own dependencies and what things that they use that are critical as well, so that, um, yeah, they can see the, like, where their, their, I guess, gaps and exposure is to, um, and hopefully invest back into open source in those areas where, um, where they can and where they need to. So, um, Love it. That's that project. Yeah. Um, and I also work on another one. Uh, it's, it's got a really boring name. It's just called Package Analysis. Okay. Um, and what it does is, the way I've been explaining it, because I, it's kind of tricky, is it's basically like a vir uh, virus scanning for open source packages on uh, package repositories. Um, when, it, when you say it's looking for virus? Or it's, for not, it's not actually looking for viruses. It's... What it's trying to do is collect behavioral data. Um, and the way it works is it watches for an update um, for on the package repository. So if someone posts a new package to NPM, it'll detect that and download it. Um, and then it does, uh, it currently only does dynamic analysis, but it'll run dynamic analysis on the NPM package in a sandbox. And it sees what are the DNS requests is it making? What are the sockets it's opening? Um, and what are the files it's touching? Is it exec uh, executing commands? And from that, inf like, it then stores that information. And then the idea is that researchers could use that as a way to 
find malicious packages, which is what I've basically been doing with it for the moment. Um, but you can also then use that over time to start to get a picture of how a uh, package might change in terms of its behavior. So if somebody compromises an account for a, a repository maintainer or a package maintainer, um, we can see that uh, this thing was just doing normal stuff and now suddenly it's um, hitting some um, uh, random domain on the internet. Maybe that's a problem. Um, Could be. <laughs> yeah. And so hopefully, uh, like in the next steps, it's about um, kind of integrating in a way where developers um, uh, can better use that data that we're um, generating so that it, we can be meaningful, like that data is meaningful and useful to somebody other than uh, people who are using it the database as a security researching tool. So um, yeah, so that's where we're heading with that. And um, it's kind of ex both interesting to see what it can detect. Um, it's very early stages, so we haven't got a whole lot of kind of smarts built into it. But even still, we're detecting things, which, yeah, is great. But it's also kind of like a, a sign of how much we've, how far we've got to go right. in improving things. So. Well, it's a fine beginning, as they say in Las Vegas. That's right. And <coughs> the other thing is it's really important. Uh, I feel it's important to be doing this as well because supply chain integrity is, is going to solve a lot of problems where you can be sh confident that that binary, that package you've got is, what, like, is from somebody. Um, but if, you don't, if that person is untrustworthy and builds something uh, insecure or malicious and then delivers it to you, they can have the perfect supply chain, software supply chain integrity. All the signing and signatures can be correct. The attestation might be correct. Um, but if that thing is itself malicious, um, then that's a place for package analysis to sit there and be able to detect where um, that's still happening. So, Love it. Sounds great, man. Hey, Caleb, we're over time. I got to oh, pull it. But it's all, first of all, thank you for coming all the way here from Sydney. Thank you for your involvement in the Open SSF and for the projects you're on and, and wishing nothing but success with this, man. Thanks, Alan. We're all pulling for you. Yeah, no worries.